Hello and welcome. We are back to give you the insights into the minds of Smart India Hackathon winners. The one of its kind Smart India Hackathon harnesses the creative and technical skills of students and uses them to solve real world problems faced by society or the industry. But the question, how are the past winners able to ace it? Let's go across and talk to one of the winners, Sasi Karan. Hello Sasi, welcome to the program. Welcome sir. Okay, Sasi, as a part of this uh, series, what we are aiming at is to let our viewers know how to deal with Smart India Hackathon and uh, what can be the right ways to, you know, uh, pursue this. So, as a past winner, I mean, let's begin by understanding, first of all, what the problem uh, was that you were working on. First of all, good afternoon, everyone. I am Sasi Karan from RMD College, CSE Department. And uh, we are SAS 2022 winners and we took a problem statement given by DRDO. Our problem statement was to monitor human health due to the increasing level of pesticides used in food. Like um, this was the actual basic problem statement. And uh, to solve this, the approach we used was like the energy is given from food. Like everything comes from food, health or disease. So we plan to uh, monitor the food we eat. Like, uh, and then uh, we have gone through the everything, like from the food. Okay, so coming to your uh, first step, the team. I mean, how did this team come about and how did you manage the team? I mean, how did you guys, you know, work with each other and, you know, make this happen? Tell us about the team preparation first. Yes, sir. Actually, we, uh, mo uh, all the team members are my classmates, so it was little easy to start up with them. And then uh, once uh, I became the team leader, like I have to think who is expert in which thing so that we will get more clarity about on where who has to work and then where we will get more productive outcome. We don't know each other means it will become a disaster at last. So we have uh, came to know about each other and then we have segregated our work uh, like equally and the 36 hours of hard work was like not just easy. Like we all came to know about how, how the teamwork improves our team mentality actually. Like on the 36 hours, we all become into a same thing. Like what we have to do on, we have coordinated without any help of any external force. Like that was the things on teamwork. Like it was actually like miracles. Like how we become like siblings like at the end of this 36 hours. So how did you divide the work uh, or responsibilities within these team members? What was the thought behind that? Was there any criteria, okay, this guy is good at this particular thing or strategically speaking, this thing will be better. How did you divide the work amongst yourself? Yeah, actually, uh, as I told, I know who is expert in what things. So, like, I know one person who is really good at, uh, like, searching things on research things. Like, we have given the research thing, uh, like, research things to him and we asked him for any assist you want. When he asked, I need extra one person, we gave him. And then when it comes to development side, I was good at development and I was developing the automation things and then I need another person and I have picked one person. Like those uh, for PPT presentation and those design works and for them we had a team. Like we know who is specialist and so we gave them as each category and to support them we gave us a person also. So like this we have divided our responsibilities equal. So before you actually went on uh, with the event, you know, uh, joined the event, what was your preparation before coming to the event? Actually, like last thing is the first year we entered to SAF. So we had no idea, like actually to be frank, what our college staff told us in first year and all, no one can win. Like it has to be like consecutively two to three years, you have to compete and then only you can win. Like those talks only came to us. And we, we came with a mindset like we have to give our best only, like no, no, nothing about the results. Only we came to give our best. No, like for that we came, but uh, as with God's grace and our hard work helped us, so we got the. Yes, of course, unless you work hard, there's no grand prize waiting for you at the end of it. But still, we would like to understand in terms of preparation, like where, what went on, like your research part, your, you know, understanding of the subject part. And you know, uh, how, how do you uh, wish to deal with all this? So what all happened before you, you know, came to the event? Um, yeah, the basic prerequisites we had was like a basic coding skills, like all six of them we had. And then like um, uh, on it, we added like little 
um, this uh, designing parts and such thing. And then uh, a special thing we had was uh, like uh, I was good at uh, automation, like automation the things like we we created a full let's like, this uh, chatbot through automation. Like this was our prerequisite. And we were all good at uh, making websites like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, like these basic things and all we had good uh, good knowledge. So we can make any website and even like uh, our teammates have uh, like uh, app developments and these uh, these tools also. Like so that uh, on a problem statement we can do whatever which is possible. Like we are ready to make any website, app, API service, everything they were ready to do. So it was those prerequisites we had before starting. Okay, so now let's come to the main event part. You know, when you came down to the place where hackathon was held, so you had to spend 36 hours non-stop to uh, crack your problem area. So how did you manage those 36 hours? Was there a strategy behind, you know, uh, timing out or were, were there phases or how did you handle those 36 hours? What was the plan? Actually, uh, I told you before, like this was the first uh, like the first uh, international hackathon we had. Uh, uh, like we had no particular strategy. Like we thought, like no one should work when the brain is not working. So we uh, we had a rule like if you are not able to concentrate or if you are not able to focus, don't do work. Go. You they had a nice table to play. We had a tennis uh, table tennis court. Everything we had. So we had nicely like if when we are we can't concentrate we have to go and do something else that's all and then when we want to sleep uh, we slept in a small little cycle like uh, uh, half an hour you half an hour me like that we uh, we kept on going and those thirty six hours was like little difficult uh, when it comes to like uh, one whole day and another half day like uh, so we had managed somehow and the most important things are like uh, uh, there there was some leisure time we can spend there so. It was not that much difficult, uh, or else we have to sit again and tap for some other leisure things. So we had little uh, facilities there. Okay, so that's very interesting. If your mind is not working, don't work. I mean, that's a very logical, uh, you know, uh, way to think about the entire thing. So, what were your team members doing when their mind was not working on? They were subsequently not working. How did you make use of that time? So, were you a part of you know all those recreational? Uh, stuff available around you. How did you spend your time in those uh, 36 hours in that portion where the mind was not working? Uh, at the first 12 hours, we were not that much sleepy. So that time we had to play like uh, uh, wherever we get sweat, that time we will feel more comfortable to come and work again. So those things like we had a little walk or else we played like table tennis. There was a nice court for table tennis and then chessboard, everything was there. Uh, like uh, my teammates were mostly playing table tennis. Like uh, one was going and playing along with the wall. After that, another person, another person will go for rest. They uh, they both will play, and then they both will come and start to work. Like this was the routine. Uh, this was for like first twelve hours. After that, we all got little more sleepy. So when we uh, when our brain is not working, we go and sleep for half an hour or fifteen to twenty minutes. Once we get up, we go wash our face, and that's all. We have get a refreshment. And that too, they were providing all sort of uh, snacks, everything. So we had not hungry. Like we are keep on working. So like somehow we managed. Okay, so that was you know a nice way to spend those you know uh, hours where things were a little difficult in terms of concentration or otherwise. So now let us uh, know more about you know how did you handle those uh, portions where uh, you had to you know interact with the mentors as well as uh, the expert panel when they had come to you know kind of uh, evaluate your project uh, what you're working on yeah, yeah. actually um, uh, what we thought was like not to hide whatever we thinking to them like if we say what are all thoughts we have they can they are good at making a like uh, if we give, give vegetables to them they will they are good at making it as a salad so we don't know how to do that so, our thoughts like if we give all the thoughts to them they are good at making it as a working model or prototype or anything so like uh, i told to my friend like what our thoughts you have say it one by one like, uh, if we say it as a stack they can build a tower though that was the basic idea we had we told what our thoughts we come like whether it, it can be a, a normal or a good idea or else it would be a silly idea still we told it so it can make some little difference in them now. So 
we shared everything to our mentors and uh, while it come to expertise and uh, expertise panels like we had to get more convenient so we search for those technical terms like how to uh, make our conversation more uh, little to their standard and then we had just a normal conversation so they understood whatever we tried to do so evaluators usually you know they kind of uh, change the course of your uh, project sometimes so did that happen in your case uh, maybe they didn't like something or they thought something is not really workable and they made you you know work on it again did that happen in your case yes sir yes sir like uh, the first thing we did was like uh, a normal only a whatsapp complaint board and then we had a payment system like uh, the payment system was like we just had a qr code but they asked to make a entire payment system from the scratch like to pull everything on our own payment system not like a, a from google services or not like other services they uh, they told to do it and then we uh, we did a little prototype uh, and then we showed them they had uh, they got satisfied with it okay so what about uh, the presentation part you know the entire uh, process culminates into you know that one final thing which makes all the difference so how did you prepare for the presentation the final presentation yeah actually the presentation before the presentation we thought that uh, the ppt like uh, whatever we are showing to them must uh, convey the things which i want to say in the visual field. so it will be more easy and i can add more points to them when i speak out so we had more Uh, more time for designing those uh, uh, presentation uh, slides those and everything we had more images than text like i want them to understand on one one look like so in like that and then my communication part was like uh, so nice like uh, i made the point clear to them and then when it comes for a uh, question and answer sections that time our entire time like stood for me. like uh, when those things like uh, they asked about research things Uh, the person who did actual research came forward and he gave the answers. So those you know, those type of things was like very new to me, and then those uh, like these are the inspiring things in that uh, entire shift. So uh, I mean, uh, coming uh, from your experience, what do you think are the expectations of the people who are taking your presentation? The experts who are eventually going to decide the quality or the you know uh, if your project is worth enough or not. actually first of all we we are not so aware of those people uh, but once they come and go like we came to know oh, like, these people are like doing these we have uh, we just gone to google and we googled their, their names and we got them like we came to know what they are expect us and they what they are expert us and then we came to know what they are expecting on us like when we get these two like we can go for the next level of uh, communications and we can go and ask them what what these are the states like we have to work on what these things we have to do like and then they can train us more on what they are expect us like okay sasi so if i have to ask you uh, a kind of a list for the people who wish to participate in hackathons so what are your kind of recommendations or your suggestions of what all they should be doing or taking care of for the participation actually the 2022 hackathon was like when we participated there was no ai at all no ai tools uh, but 23 is like full of ai era and it is like even if you don't know much about coding when you know to use the ai tools properly surely surely you can win this like not only ai tools like we have to know little basic things and then when we can put together and we can convince the judge like we have did this like we have made this things work like that like when we give the satisfaction to them surely we can win and the a to click chat gpt will itself will solve the entire problem statement but that is not enough for the judge like that will be the hinge at this year, uh, this uh, this year and the uh, shot they will crack this and, uh, and the a uh, list of things they need is uh, the little coding skills and lot of knowledge about the ai tools and uh, on on it the communication skills really if your communication is good the point which you have in your brain will go to the judge and they can really see the vision which you had in your mind that is a real powerful part so in your case in the case of your team what do you think worked what what made you you know successful 
actually uh, i don't know how to say that uh, what was a particular thing but uh, most importantly the team uh, team works like we all had the mind to uh, work together we all had the mind to help each other we all had to like when there is some problem all went to solve it when there is something like uh, uh, any other place where we stuck all helped them and then like when someone is tired we we went and tried to encourage the person like we did this as team everything good or bad or development or research everything we did as a team so that is the part where it uh, drive us to the next level okay that was uh, nice hearing from you sachikaran i mean the way you guys prepared and the way you came across this uh, hackathon and went on winning it so i'm sure your inputs your suggestions and your sharing of you know your own experiences will help the people who wish to you know come here and participate in uh, the coming editions so thank you so much for joining us and sharing your thoughts and i hope people will make good use of, you, of what all you had to say thank you so much thank you so this was sasikaran with his tips and tricks and all his insights into how they went on to win smart india hackathon will bring to you so many other uh, smart india hackathon winners to make you understand better how to deal with this competition till then keep watching